we're back. You're back with Bonded Sister Bonded Edition. Bonded Sister Edition. Hello, hello. And today's topic, which I feel like we kind of went back and forth between like modern dating versus like born in the wrong generation. Born in the wrong generation. Yeah. I think that maybe our point of view will be received as a little bit outdated, but I think Vanessa used the right word. I said traditional. I can think of it as traditional. <laughs> I think what sums it up is that our general like view and perspective of dating is not necessarily compatible with what the standard the current standards of dating are with like what the norm is with what yeah. the norm is mm-hmm. exactly yeah. so i just feel like you guys are going to have a different perspective on modern dating so right. i was a, like a lot younger dating you guys are like grown women and have mm-hmm. all your boundaries and things more sorted out i feel like yeah the perspectives are very unique and even vanessa you dating in your 20s mm-hmm. versus me dating in my 30s like i yeah. think that even looks different that's definitely more serious at, at this at like i'm 20 seven now and I feel like I my approach has to be more serious because of my age something I really want to do when dating is be intentional not easy but if you can make a point to just be intentional with you know the person and with yourself and with the situation that's the one of the one of the, one of the best things you can do so mm-hmm. can we start this modern dating episode with some attraction principles from one of my favorite books we sure can that I will link in the bio i feel like this modern dating principle is so good so attraction principle number one anything a person chases in life runs away Hmm. so good it's a big one another attraction principle um it's your attitude about yourself that a man will adopt super and we were talking about this your self-respect your standards the worth that you place on yourself. I made a point to write this down uh, because I really feel like women are selling themselves short nowadays. And I think by selling themselves short, they're doing a disservice to themselves. And you know, when dating and modern dating, you really have to walk with the confidence and because it is going to so much like affect how they're, how the guy is viewing you. Want to make sure to like always walk with your head held high, you know, and your standards high as well. I agree. And I think you have to love yourself first Mm -hmm. in a, in a rightly ordered way, Mm -hmm. of course, not in a necessarily self love isn't selfish, Mm -hmm. but when you love yourself and you're able to hold your head up high and like know your worth, which I think is what you're trying to say. I saw a Mm. funny, uh, Instagram meme that was like, yeah, I know my worth, but I'm having a sale. Oh yeah. So no sales here. We no are not sales. condoning any and sales on our self-worth. Also, when, yes. when you have a stronger self-love, it will help so much when you're dating because you, you know, you just won't accept the bare minimum. Exactly. Um, and that's a huge component, I feel like, of modern dating right now. Yeah. Is accepting yeah. the bare minimum. But we're going to continue to get into yeah, this. Yeah, well, so. let's, let's break that <laughs> apart, accepting bare minimum a little bit more. Definitely. But what you guys are kind of talking about goes into another attraction principle I have. And it's if the choice is between her dignity and having a relationship – she will prioritize her dignity hmm. dignity above all else. Hmm. So it's kind of what you're saying. So it's powerful. like, I feel like women, we are held responsible to like keeping the bar high hmm. because I think like when you have a low bar, men get like accustomed to that. And then hmm. like the general standard amongst women just gets lower and lower because obviously like women want to find someone who want to like further a relationship. And so mm-hmm. I think you tend to like drag men along a bit more. And obviously it could be vice versa too, where like, you know, men can feel the same way about women. That's, that's fair. Mm-hmm. Yes. But it's like, it's just like generation after generation. It's just being like, love and romance has been quite watered down. Hmm. Yes. And I actually think what you're saying is not even against men. It's, no, it's not actually. It, it's, it's against it's, our <laughs> sex uh, as females because, you know, if it is our responsibility as women, and I completely agree with that statement, there's lots of philosophers and, you know, spiritual people and secular people who agree that it's women who set the standard in society. They yeah. set the standard for the behavior they will and will not tolerate. So in going off of that, I think, and I've actually said this to like my male friends, like yeah. I think it's the women's fault <laughs> Yeah, for a lot of the issues that we are seeing coming up in modern dating. Yeah. And I think I, I genuinely think like, and I've lot, been one of them, but I yeah, honestly I don't, I, too. Yeah, I don't even, against uh, women no, in I, general, I, I like, don't even think it's guilty. purposeful though. I don't know if it's intent. Sometimes I think women it's just not so intentional. Bad. That's it's right. Not intentional. Right. Yeah. 
I think we're all going to like tackle this a little bit more. Um, I kind of, while we're on this topic though, okay. Standards and lowering the bar are like to that point. Okay. This is a little controversial and maybe we go back and edit this out. But like, for example, I'm just going to go out and like talk specifics. Like what is acceptable? What's not acceptable? Because I don't want to like dance around. I want to just be forthright about what we're trying to say. Yeah. So like an example maybe is like strip clubs. Mm. Mm. You know, when like you're drinking, you're on a bachelorette trip or whatever, it's just like, it's like a question because it's so divided it, and it's never someone's like in the middle about it. It's either like someone's totally cool with it yes, or like you're totally against it, you yes. know? And it's just like, I just want to use this as an example of like setting the bar. Like we have to like raise that bar a bit more where it's like, it is just degrading towards women. Like there's so much disrespect surrounding it. Every party involved. When we support those types of things, it's like condoning that like that as a whole is like acceptable. And it's frankly the objectification of women. You know, that's that's what it boils down to. And I think that is un unfortunately such a pervasive um, ideology in modern society and modern dating is that like, and, and just not even just with women, but like men and women, we bo both sexes feel used. Yeah. And not loved mm. and treasured yeah. as individuals. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you accept things that objectify human beings with dignity that are yeah. all individually loved by God and children of God, yeah. you are taking something away from the love that we were created for. Yeah. And both men and women feel the effects of that. It's not yeah. just women who feel the effects of being no. used. It, it works both ways. A hundred percent. I think a lot of women may, it may bother them and they just feel like, well, it's just normalized and like, he's going to think I'm like weird or like not mm -hmm. cool girl vibes. And it's just like, so we all just right. like accept it. But I feel like if everyone came together and was just like honest about how they feel mm -hmm. like I'm not mm -hmm. super cool with it then yes. we could raise the bar and I think I'm just trying to bring everything we're saying together like with a, like a concrete example, example. Exactly. exactly yeah and it's not to shame anyone by the way like it's not to shame men or make men feel bad about it it's not to shame women or make women feel bad about it it's just to say right. like let's collectively raise the bar it, how we can not only is it good for you as a woman but you will inspire the men around you yeah. and some of those values mm, and those standards might transform the man's perspective yeah. and let yeah. them see a new, you know, see things in a different light that they didn't see before. And that might inspire them to change. I mean, hmm. the women yeah. were created in a specific way, the feminine beauty. Hmm. We were created to inspire men. Yeah. Hmm. And you know, that's so good. It, that's so it, good. It, it's really, it's really true. And I'm not just saying, and, and men can obviously inspire women. There's pl yeah. plenty of men I find very inspiring. And so like we can help bring out the best in the men around us when we are staying true to our standards mm. and we are, um, you know, acknowledging and living our self-worth. Yeah. A hundred percent. I agree with you that if you raise the bar, most men will meet it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Most men will meet it. Right, but if, and if yeah. not, then like, you know, maybe that man just needs to grow a little more on his own or like, yeah. and that's not something you should concern yourself too much with, you know, just like, yeah. I just kind of have that, you know, saying in mind that you just said, which is that most men will meet that bar, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause then you'll walk more confidently in your dating journey, you know? A hundred percent. Um, but yeah, that's just something that I was like, let's, let's Give bring it all together. Example. Yeah. I like that. I have another controversial attraction principle. I don't know if you guys want to go here. It says attraction principle 22 hmm. sex and the spark are not one in the same. Hmm. Love that. Well, I, I will say that I think that physicalness for both men and women, believe it or not, can be very blinding to how heard men say much that. you even like that, that person, that, that too. love mm -hmm. that person. It's not just women that it may blind mm -hmm. um, or connect. But it's, you know, men too. Like that, that I think sometimes men are selling themselves short as well. Like and obviously not every day is going to feel like Christmas day with someone, but like that, that like, overall feeling should like, always kind of be there be yeah like person? you should or am I just have comfortable? are you just going along to get along is kind of what I'm trying to say obviously like day in day out life isn't gonna feel super exciting all the time mm -hmm. but like are but are you asking yourself the tough questions like am I going along to get along or like is this like the most amazing you know 
relationship I've ever been involved with. Yeah. Kind of like we were talking about in the red flags, like rushing, like so many people rush mm. the mm. physical side of the relationship. And I think society is genuinely craving a more emotional and meaningful connection relationships. And I feel mm. like maybe where people are coming up short or feel a little more empty and like their relationships is like, okay, we jump into the physical and mm. like the physical is just supposed to be the, like the sprinkles on top more mm. so. It just like makes all the, the other- on the cake. Yeah. Like, but it can't be the entire substance mm. of a relationship. Right. Mm. Which is what- It's extremely important and yeah. you know, but it's a, it's an expression mm -hmm. of that spiritual and emotional connection mm, yeah. and so if you don't have you you can't really have the fullness and the beauty of one without the other yeah i think anyone can like in this hookup culture like anyone can just hook up and that be that but like to have an emotional connection with someone it's just so much more meaningful even in even when zach and i go on date nights and like connect over a date night like the like the intimacy is just so much more meaningful because you actually got to connect with each other yes. when you connect mentally and emotionally it's only gonna amplify the physical like yeah. it's gonna honestly probably amplify it like times a million like you actually are right. you might be settling for like a, like average when it could be like over the top because you have that mental and emotional connection yeah right you know? right and i mean i also think it's it's worth saying that it's just really unfortunate how the current expectation in modern dating mm -hmm. is like by date three we're having sex mm -hmm. i know that's wild like it's it's really hookup culture is the perfect description because sometimes not even that sometimes we don't even go on a date and that's the expectation mm -hmm. and it's just been so again like i want to emphasize like sex is not bad but it no. is so cheapened yeah. by our society and so the way that we it. treat it and also the way that we treat each other and then we mm. wonder why there is so much dysfunction between men and women and so much animosity and, between and the sexes because mm. everything is like it's been perverse been it's perverse and out of order and it's just not going to create peace it's not going to mm. create harmony it's not going to create the loving relationships that we want mm. yeah mm. and it doesn't just create dysfunction um you know in the relation, you know, in the relationship, sometimes it also creates dysfunction in yourself, you know, and just put a ton of emphasis on the physical. You're going to, I feel like you're going to come up like empty, empty. Exactly. And disappointed to summarize all of this, like, which was, let me reread the attraction principle, sex and the spark are not one in the same. It's like, how can we just like dial back the hyper focus on the physical aspect of relationships? It's not a widely accepted idea that ultimately the best place for sex would be in a marriage because you have that like level of commitment because then you get to yeah. build more of the emotional connection and you get to truly know that person without just the neurochemical things going yeah. on mm -hmm. in the brain you know people joke around that you can miss a million red flags when you have rose colored glasses on yeah. like everything is red everything is rosy you're yeah. just you're gonna miss some things that are worth diving deeper into and when you focus so much on that superficial physical aspect mm -hmm. you really are neglecting the deeper parts you're just mm. neglecting the deeper parts of the relationship because it's so mm. tempting when you know you are attracted to someone it is so tempting mm. for that to be the all-consuming focus of the relationship mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and again like that's not going to sustain for a 50 year marriage and i it, it's just i not. always say it's wild what an emphasis is put on like the physical when day in day out like 90 percent of like your life with someone it's not it's going to be like a little part of it you know yeah. really like your day in day out is like just being with right. that person even if it's every day it can only last for so long <laughs> <laughs> and then you're left with the other hours of the day that yeah. you're going to be communicating with that person and going through life and struggles and hard times mm -hmm. and you know working through those things together so mm -hmm. you know much more important to get to know someone's soul and mind and mm. emotions mm. then be so focused on getting to know their body it's just there's so many other important pieces of a relationship mm -hmm. not yes. to say in the right place that's not extremely important mm -hmm. and you know 
things were much different only 50, 60 years ago. Oh my gosh. Like it's just amazing how things have accelerated (laughs) so much when, Mm -hmm. you know, we hear stories about our mom's parents. So like our maternal grandparents when they were courting in what the, the Mm fifties and he was just like happy to sit with her and watch her like hang laundry, you know? And Mm -hmm. it was just... It's so romantic. It's so romantic. Hmm. To hear about their love. It's so romantic. And men also kind of stepping up to be the pursuer and be proactive in the relationship and put effort in, which I think now with the hookup culture and I think, you know, on some level, and again, I'm pointing three fingers at myself in terms that there's some desperation with women around like getting married Mm -hmm. and trying to like make something work and force something to work. And sex has become part of that. And being the pursuer and chasing men has become like part of that. So things are just all out of balance. And we all grew up in our family, like being taught. I mean, I feel like our mom taught us from the age of like five, girls don't call boys, boys call girls Mm. first. And like, that's, that's the environment that Mm. we grew up in. True. And it's just interesting how like so many like roles have, Mm. have shifted. Well, since, just, I mean, really a handful of decades ago. <laughs> on that, that on that ago. topic of things being so different 50 years ago, let's, let's talk about like how mom, and co- we can correlate that with how mom says like, you know, boys call girls because back 50 years ago, not only like was that, you know, what was like the, the thing, but also like when a woman would walk in the room, all the men would stand up. Like yeah. look at, think of how far we've come from just that. You know, yes. like that it's doesn't like so, really, it yeah. doesn't really happen anymore ever. Yeah, it's <laughs> a far concept to it, even think about. It, right? It, it is, you know, and I think, you know, it's sad, but I think women accepting the modern standards of society has just like caused the general respect and admiration for women hmm. to not be what it was. Yeah, diluted And it's it. not that we're less deserving of it as women. Like mm-hmm. we were made by God. We were created to demonstrate God's goodness and we are worthy of respect. It is just sad how the respect overall for women has eroded so much over time. We're not letting men take their proper place either and respecting them for the qualities that we should be respecting them for. And again, I just think that it has created this level of dysfunction um, between the two genders. And I think that really the restoration of that depends on both men and women living standards that are above the current generation, living yeah. God standards, yeah. really, because yeah. God designed ultimately the relationship between men and women. And yeah. he made it perfect in the beginning. And really what came... He knows like it's optimal function. Like exactly. he wrote the manual. So. I, exactly. And what happened that distorted all of this? Sin. It's like very, very yeah. simple. And in yeah. Genesis, like, you know, after, after sin and after the fall, God said that women's desire will be for their husband and men will try to like rule over them. And so like, there's just been this, like Mm. from the beginning, there's just been this inherent dysfunction that occurs in men and women's relationship when we are not striving to find the proper place for things, God's proper place for, you know, not only sex, but all these different relational dynamics. And we're not living the truest sense of who we were created to be, you know, in that, in that identity that God gave us. Yeah. I feel like I almost want to bring it back to like, maybe we all can mention something like what's like a practical way that we can like raise the bar. Obviously I'll use like a past, more of a past example, but I think like this doesn't stop in marriage, right? You, you really go in with like the same respect and boundaries and all those things that you've already, you've already had. But for me, I can kick it off when I was dating Zach. I'll use like Zach. Cause I mean, we're married. So I think <laughs> That's the best example. Um, Shout out to Zach. We love you. (laughs) When I was dating Zach, I was so, so busy at one point we were dating. Like with, you guys know that like very demanding job I had and all that. And we lived like 30 minutes away. And like he lived more towards like the downtown area where like there was more just happening and going on. So it just so happened that I would be going to him more than he would be coming to me. And I remember like one Friday, I I don't know how I came up with this rule. I don't know when I came up with this rule. But one Friday, he's like, hey, let's go to happy hour. It was like two o'clock. And I'm like, no, I can't go to happy hour. Like that's not enough notice. I'm super stressed. I need to go home. I need a shower. I'm going to bed. Mm -hmm. But then it like provoked like 
I am implementing a 48 hour rule. Like I need 48 hour notice before you will see him before we can, before we can make these plans. Like I need you to tell me Friday night. Like I need you to tell me Wednesday. Let's do happy hour on Friday with X, Y, Z friends or whatever. Mm. I need you to tell me Thursday. Mm. Like even if it was like Thursday night, whatever, whatever Thursday, Saturday, I want to go to dinner. This is where I want to go. Like, this is our plans because I need to be properly prepared like mm. for myself. Like mm-hmm. I, like, I think that's just a very small level of like respecting my time and, and like schedule. respecting my schedule, mm-hmm. respecting yeah. like what I have going on. Yeah. Like it's a very small thing, but just requiring that like, you can't text me at 7 p.m. like Netflix and chill. Like, you know, like, or, right. you, but the can't small text, right. or you can't be like at right. 11 o'clock and I like come meet me out with so-and-so. Like, you know right. what I mean? Because it's just like. You're demanding mm. that consideration. Yeah, mm-hmm. like consider. It's take time. It is. And like, I, sh- yeah. I don't want to scream in the mic, but I shouldn't be like a fleeting thought that you have at 11 p.m. Mm-hmm. Like, if you want to see me, it also goes mm-hmm. to show like, if you want to see me, you care to see me. And like, it's on your mind on Thursday. Ooh. It's not on your mind at 11 p.m. on Saturday. And whether you want to make it 24 hours or whatever, it's just setting that bar mm-hmm. for them to be a little more thoughtful and respectful. Mm-hmm. That's yes. it. Exactly. I snapped I to that. that. I literally snapped to that. I probably well, rambled about that for too much. I but I, To answer your question, I think that um, one of the ways that we could set the bar too is just not shying away from conversations regarding the morals that you bring to the table in relationships. Like don't shy the moral away. Standards the moral have. standards you have. Don't yeah. shy away from hard conversations. That's another way to I set love the that. bar. Mm-hmm. I and love that. it's hard. Like I, I I am guilty of this. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Can we just, you know, keep it light? Yeah. <laughs> just have some nice food. You know, it's a nice night. No, I, I don't want to talk about it. But I, that's something that's really made me grow in this past year with certain experiences that I've been having. Like I've been challenged to have to talk about it. So because I've had to talk about it, you're getting more comfortable. I'm getting more comfortable. And I also have put more thought into it because I know I'm going to have to talk about it and I want to be able to carry it out properly. And I want it to come across to them strongly. And even I do still struggle with like saying it just bluntly and not and I, I do still shy away in certain things like mm-hmm. about regarding morals and regarding like my standards and relationships but mm-hmm. you know you're hurting yourself by shying away like let yeah. let like speak up and let colors show speak up and be at peace with yourself irregardless of you know what they're going to say or how they're going to take it I think it's just a side note in modern dating, like telling men up front and seeing their reaction also allows you to get to know them so much faster. You know, it's like, yes. it's like, see how someone responds to you when you say no mm-hmm. or whatever. And then it's like, you get to really see their character come yes. through a bit more. Character comes through then, when people yeah. don't, don't get, get their, their way. way. Yeah. I'm a firm believer in Or feel like maybe that. things aren't going to go their way or what, right. they were, what they were planning for. Right. Yes. Yeah. So I'm getting a little passionate. I'm sorry. Yeah, I saw that little rant. I'm getting that a little was, intense. That was really good. <laughs> I'm so yeah, sorry. Wow. <laughs> Christina. Yes, your turn. This is a great question. Gina, I want to point that, that out. That was on the fly. But that was That's great a on really the fly. Great question. It's so great. I'm actually struggling to answer it. And you? Never I, you. Yeah, you, no, you I, have boundaries. You have I, like. I do. Like I would say, you know, as a. 31 year old dating now after having a definitely very diverse (laughs) dating history I would say my standards and my boundaries are higher than ever it feels good I bet (laughs) and it is good and and I just want to say you know really sit with yourself um you know if you are a Christian and you know you read the Bible you pray God is your priority like Pray about your boundaries. Pray about your standards. Pray about what God's word has to say. Um, Because knowing where your boundaries are and your standards are, like that is something that has been game changing for me. And I feel like when I have been in previous relationships, Mm -hmm. I tried to water myself down Mm -hmm. in various ways, Mm -hmm. in the ways that I compromised, um, you know, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, the ways that I compromised myself. And I am just not willing to make those compromises now. So what's an example of something you won't compromise now anymore? That, yeah, that's really, that's great. That's like, yeah, 
Well, you seriously, seriously, people can't just see me True. whenever they want to see me or expect mm. like hours and hours of my time mm. or expect to be number one on my priority list. Like mm. there's God, number one, me, number two, my family, number three. And like, we'll see what happens um, from that point on. But it's just, it's just different. And I'm also, I'm also accepting where God is saying no. Like Mm -hmm. I said, I've been saying very single for the last two years, but I have gone on Mm -hmm. lots of different dates and I've observed different Mm -hmm. people and I've accepted like this person isn't right. This person isn't right. And Mm -hmm. I didn't really do that in the past. So giving yourself that permission to -hmm. say, okay, this person doesn't meet my standards and that's okay. That doesn't make them a bad person, but giving yourself to say, okay, no, this isn't it just brings you one step closer to like the fulfillment of God's plan in your life. So I Mm -hmm. think being honest with yourself and accepting that and being honest while you're in these situations about what your standards are, how you're not going to compromise. Um, I really personally now want to get to know people uh, more in a platonic and friendly way. Um, Just so it's easier to have those hard conversations because you're not attached to a certain outcome. And you want to see people in all different different situations. So that's a little bit of a a practical advice that I have. Yeah, that's good. I would give myself. (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. I feel like, I hope that this didn't come across super harsh. Like I'm thinking back at all the things we said and like, hopefully it doesn't come back too harsh (laughs) and the delivery, like, obviously we understand like no one's perfect. We've made all these mistakes we've mentioned. I feel like, you know, like we to varying degrees. Yeah. To varying Mm -hmm. degrees. And like, no one's perfect. And like you extend grace in the proper circumstances always, you know, but it's just, I think what we could say collectively is like modern dating has probably lowered the bar for men and women alike. And like, what can we actively do? Obviously also looking to God and his word to like up the standards, Mm -hmm. you know? Yes. Yes. So I think with that, we can bring God's word into it to close. Yes. Yes, Let's close first. So the verse that we chose for this is second Timothy two verse 22. Now flee from youthful lusts and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Love that. I just love it. So good. It is so good. A pure heart. Yes. Great. Like pure uh, intentions. Yes. Desiring to show genuine love to another person, Mm -hmm. you know, in a way that sometimes requires us to be selfless. Yeah. And, you know, we also just pray for that purity of heart, mind, soul, and body so that we're able to make the best decisions for, you know, all of these different facets of of life. Yeah. Our futures. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great note yeah. to end to yeah. end on for sure. I love it. Okay. <laughs> All right. I think that, that wraps, wraps it up. up. All, All right. right. Thanks guys. Bye. Guys. Bye. Bye.